Hey, this is John Carlos, and I am really excited to do a Funko unboxing of Marvel Battle World Series 2 Treachery at Twilight. Now, if you're already hip to the global phenomenon that was Marvel Battle World Series 1, then you already know that it is a fun game that combines tabletop gaming with toy collectability. But with Series 2, Funko has cooked up all sorts of fun new expansion sets that enhance the gameplay in exciting new ways. Now, in this video, we're going to be unboxing all of these items, starting with... Let's find out what's in this battle ball. Yes, the battle ball is back, and how could it not be? Now, one of the fun things I like about this game is that, sure, playing with friends and family is fun, but sometimes that's just not possible. Sometimes you have to just play with yourself. And the way this game is designed is that you can absolutely play this game alone, and there is no better place to start than with just picking up one battle ball. For nine bucks, it gives you everything you need to start playing right away. So let's open this up. As I spin it a lot, wow. <laughs> um, and we will see what one out of 30 new characters we will be getting in this. All right, we got Shuri. Uh, so you will always get, oh, that's cool, it's a good design. All right, we get, you get a hero mover and you always get a die, so no matter which one of these you pick up, you'll always be getting a die. You'll always be ready to play. You have your instructions. Uh, you've got your uh, danger tokens and your, your little flipping danger coin. Those are always cardboard. We have our mystery hero inside the Thanos stone with their mystery hero card. And then we got the five battle cards within. The fun thing about the little outer battle balls too is they serve as a little figure display stand. Let's see which battle world cards we got in here. Let's rip that open. And here you place your Shuri card right in there. And we've got our Thanos stone so we can or Thanos stone card for playing for the Thanos stone. Hogzilla, the Bullfrog, Spider Army, I like that one, and Loki's Trick. If you're not hip to how Battle World works, I'm just going to go over the basics really quickly. You've got your hero, and you've got your battles. Um, you roll the die. In this case, it landed on a 9. Um, this battle that we're in, you have to beat equal to or beat 7. I landed on 9. You got the little red brain there, little red brain here for her characters, plus four. So that's 13. 13 definitely beats seven. That counts as a hit. Um, for each round, like this battle has two, this one has three rounds, this one you only need to beat one round to win. So you flip the card over when it's not your turn. Now it's the bad guy's turn. You flip this little doodad, and we have either a sun or a moon. The sun right here means that that counts as a miss. The bad guys attacked. You flip it back. You, you get the gist. Now, if I win this Thanos stone battle versus any other battle, when you win the battle, you flip it over. If you lost the battle, you flip it and you put the token on it, the little red miss token. Now, if I win this round, I get to unlock a Thanos stone and free one of the heroes that Thanos has trapped. So you bust open this foam, and we get the Twilight Miss Marvel. Not Miss Marvel. <laughs> That's uh, uh, Wanda Maximoff, the Scarlet Witch. Uh, this, I believe, is a very fancy, rare uh, figure to have. So she has a corresponding card. What's great about freeing those characters from Thanos Stone is that they can start joining into the game immediately on the turn that they were won. You can continue to add more characters and add more battles, so on and so forth. The instructions show you, like when you're starting, if you're starting with one hero, you can uh, definitely expand to like starting with two, starting with three, and how that affects how many other cards you use, yada, yada, yada. Now that we've gone over just the basics of the gameplay, you might greater appreciate why I'm so excited about the Premium Game Pieces Pack. We 
we got the card. We've got the exclusive Groot. We've got these fancy Thanos stones. And listen to that plastic. That sound of plastic to me is the sound of fanciness. See, normally the danger tokens and the danger coin are just made out of cardboard. But by making them out of plastic, by adding this uh, little lenticular element to it, by adding this little sculpted Thanos face right into the surface, I don't know, it makes it feel more legit, makes it feel more fancy. I mean, if, you're, if your hero gets to be made of plastic, why not the rest of the game pieces? I think this is a really, really fun set. Also, I love the sculpt of this exclusive uh, Spider Island costume Groot, and I think the paint on his face is awesome. So you not only get these premium pieces, you not only get uh, uh, an exclusive character, but my favorite element to this, you get a reusable Thanos stone. The normal Thanos stones were like made of like a foam, like a breakable foam, and once you, you broke them open, that was it. But now, you can take any character, and you could put them in this Thanos stone, and you can play them as that new Thanos stone character. It's reusable. Like this is, I think one of the smartest things the game has done is made reusable Thanos stones. I love it. This would set you back about eight bucks. Next up, we have a very exciting expansion set. We have Black Panther's Talon Fighter. There's the fighter. And here is Black Panther in his 2099 suit and his card and a launch pad and a little instructions. Okay, this one's just super fun. Even without getting into like the nitty gritty of the gameplay, I just like the design of this talent fighter. I just think it's really cool looking. I think it's just super fun. Also, you get an exclusive hero. You get 2099 Black Panther, and I think he looks outstanding. I love the color scheme on this one. This is really, really fun. So, for 15 bucks, you get another hero, an exclusive hero, and you get this uh, Talon Fighter, which you, you load the pilot token in here, and then you, you spin this. You have to spin both. And whatever you get here, well, first of all, you have to put your character for that round on there. And let's say we have either a moon or like a fist. Okay, so for example, let's say you're playing a game and you've got, uh, there's a fist here. So you're going to move this one up to that round that you're playing. You release this little lever in the back. There's a little button right there. That, unfortunately, is a miss. But if you do that, that's a hit for that round. Yeah. Playing around with this as determining your hit or miss, way more fun for me. Now, if you're hip to the Guardians of the Galaxy Mission Breakout attraction at Disney California Adventure, then you may recognize the Collector's Tower seen here as this expansion set. Ta-da! So first of all, I just want to take a moment to take a look at all the details of this. We'll go and take a closer look kind of inside to see what all these knobs do, but there are twisty knobs. And there's also just fun sculpting on the general design of the Collector's Tower. I really dig it. It is worth noting that there is this little icon here of the uh, Twilight Sword. And over here is the X. These two things will pay off in a moment. But let's just take a closer look inside here's a look at the back uh the inside of this where you you turn like this knob right here and you can kind of see that there is like a little tubey spirally flabbity dabbity do um we have this little spinning thing here uh and then you can see in here there's like flaps inside several different little flippy flappies and this little slidey triangular thing right in there. Also, let's just take a closer look at the Twilight Sword and uh, the Collector himself. I like the sparkle that this is made with, and I love the sculpt and paint. Nice detail on the hair and beard 
It also comes with the fancy schmancy Twilight Sword die. So playing with the Collector's Tower introduces the idea of the Twilight Sword. So you attach the Collector to the Twilight Sword base, which then fits into a little nook right on top. Let's say you're playing Shuri. You're going to be rolling your regular attack die. But you can play with the little knobs to try to get the little flaps into whatever little position you think might help get your, your die to land. Not in the X area, but where the sword icon is. Land in the X which means you still attack with whatever you know it, 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 it turns up as. But let's say you, you try, and yeah, you get it with the Twilight Sword thing. Well, now your attack hits, and now you get to take this and move the little Twilight Sword with your hero into gameplay. From here on out, you get to roll on your turns the Twilight Sword die. Now, if... First of all, it lands on that side, which is great. If the die comes out of the Twilight Sword icon door, your attack always hits, no matter what number. But if it lands with this little thingy, with this little icon face up, not only does your attack hit, but you also get to advance two spaces. This is a very fun expansion set that I think really adds a lot of fun new elements to the gameplay, and it is 15 bucks. Next up, we're gonna take a look at the Mega Pack. Just like Series 1, you gotta make the Battle Ball, you gotta make the Mega Pack. Now before we open it up, I just wanna show you guys the listing of the 30 heroes that are available in Series 2, including, uh, you know, noted in black text, the regular ones, and then in blue text, the rare, and then in red text, the ultra rare Twilight versions. You've already seen the Twilight Scarlet Witch. Uh, personally, I am hoping to see a rocket. I am hoping to see Groot. Uh, I'm hoping to see uh, Throg, Valkyrie, Captain Marvel. Uh, I'm just excited about the potential for all these. There's some really, really, really fun, kind of deep cuts, kind of fun random characters. All right, I've cut off all the little plastic edges. Let's uh, see what we got in here, because I know we're immediately going to see some more characters hiding beneath this. There goes the instructions down there. We got a Shuri. Yeah, Throg. That's awesome. And we got Cap Wolf. We have the, uh, the cardboard pieces, the not premium cardboard pieces. We have two Thanos stones. And we got the little figure stands. Um, and we have in here the 2099 Captain Marvel along with the, uh, the other total 13 cards. I love the uh, little kind of lenticular shine to that card. So fancy. And of course, we always, when you get a battle ball or a mega pack, you get the die. And then here are the uh, the corresponding Thanos uh, mystery cards that match the numbers on the bottom. So when you get two and you're wondering which one's which, F212 goes with FC212. So let's take a closer look at some of these figures because as a Funko fanatic, one of the things I like about Battleworld the most is the figures themselves. There's some nice sculpting right along the edges of like her belt and boots. I love the expression on her face and the fact that she's in a little flying pose. So she's just about to take off with that little cloud kicking off right there. Um, let's free some of these from their plastic bag containment. Cap Wolf looks awesome. This is such a dynamic sculpt considering how little the figure is. It's tiny, but really clean paint. Really fun sculpting. I love Throg. Look at the expression on his face. That is awesome. Also, the fact that they included a bunch of lightning surrounding Mjolnir. That's, uh, that's, that's extra. That's great. The fact that it's kind of surrounding him, too. Um, and then we've seen Shuri, but let's, uh, let's open this one up just because can't leave her in the bag. She needs to breathe. Look at the paint detail on the face. Look at the sculpt on the hair. I love it. Now, the most exciting part. 
finding out what's in a Thanos stone. Let's just pretend we're playing, all right? Just so we can get, ooh, that looks like Iron Man. That looks great. Look at the liftoff blast. I love it. And let's look at this other Thanos stone before we take a look at the uh, 13 cards. 2099 Spidey, what a great design. I love 2099 Spidey. What a fun set. Now, these cards, let's see what worlds we get. I mean, obviously we're gonna have this shiny uh, Captain Marvel here. And then we have, you know, look at that. Those look familiar. Uh, we got Shuri. We got, yeah, Wear Cap. Wolf Cap. Wear Cap. Uh, Throg. Here we have the Dinosaur Army battle. The Chain Gang 2099 battle. A Thanos Stone at Pym's Laboratory. That's a fun one. Uh, we have, yeah, Infected Aim Soldiers. Ultron Zombie Wrecker. That'd be a fun battle. Mr. Negative. That's an easy battle to win. Well, maybe. Because um, plus nine. Uh, Venom 2099. Yeah, the Alchemax security. We have another Spider Army. And then another Loki's trick. Uh, this came up before. You attach this to the side of a one of the battles that you're playing. And when you play this battle... The, uh, there's a little Loki curse that affects the gameplay. We have Zombie Whiplash, and then the Wastelands Thanos Stone, another Loki's Trick, and just for funsies, let's take a look at the Iron Man and uh, Spider-Man 2099 cards, just so you can get a sense of, you know, what the uh, special attacks are on here and whatnot. Uh, this Mega Pack will set you back 20 bucks. Lastly, and for some Maybe most importantly, we're gonna take a look at the storage case that fans had suggested, nay, demanded during series one. So Funko has answered the call with series two by including not just a storage case, but a storage case that comes with an exclusive figure. All right, I guess it's just time to rip this open. And look, it has the little kind of textured Marvel Battle World logo kind of sculpted, kind of embossed and debossed right into the surface. So it snaps and unsnaps on both sides. One of the little things I like about this is it's not a single hinge, it's a double hinge, which really allows the back section to lay flat. Uh, we do get two tiers including this little section here, which is great for, uh, for putting in little pieces. Well, I'll demonstrate it all in a moment, but uh, oh, I like the little texture, the little, little hexagonal design there. Um, we do get pork rind as a figure, so let's just go ahead and take a closer look at him. Another really, really fun design, but I really like the pose. The sculpt on the tusks are really good. Um, yeah, so Obviously, this thing can hold uh, like 50 figures. There's spaces for figures, cards. Uh, let's just go ahead and start laying some of those in right now. I'm gonna drop these cards in right there. Premium game pieces are going in there and in there. Gonna drop the heroes into the case. I'm actually getting really nostalgic over this. You know, as a kid of the 80s, I remember how like every toy line had an official carrying case. So, uh, I kind of love this. All right, I'm gonna be laying down some of the uh, display stands. And also, the Thanos stones. When you open them up, the, the, the reusable Thanos stones, they fit perfectly in here. Like, they're just the right height to uh, clear the little ledge where the, the second, the tray goes. So I love that not only do they make reusable Thanos stones, but that they are designed to fit perfectly in this carrying case. And like, you know, if you're like hardcore into this, having this like to carry around, like it's great for when you're going to meet up with buddies, meet up in the park, take it over to a friend's house. This is super awesome, not only for gaming, but also 
just as a toy collector, I love this sort of stuff. The carrying case is $25, and if you're interested in getting that, or any of the items I showed you in this video, you can head over to Funko.com slash Marvel Battle World, and you can check out all the things they have there. I hope you're as excited about Series 2 as I am. Like, I think Funko has done something really cool by combining tabletop gaming with toy collecting. And granted, there have been other tabletop games that feature, like, figurines as part of the gameplay, but I think they've done something extra special with Series 2, like with the Talon Fighter, with the Collector's Tower, by taking gameplay and combining it with playtime. Because no matter whether you're an adult or a kid, it's one thing to collect toys and collect figurines, but it's another thing to actually play with them. So I think that's super fun. Thanks for watching, everybody. Let me know in the comments below if you end up getting any of the stuff from Series 2, what you think of it.